So I want you to honestly answer me this. What is the value of your life? How much is your time truly worth to you? Why do you feel the need to allow yourself to ever get rejected by things that don't deserve your energy? In this video, I'm going to help you wake up and stop tolerating any more bullshittery that doesn't deserve your time and energy anymore. Let's get started. So the first key area of rejection that I find a lot of girls struggling with is when a guy ghosts them, rejects them, or tells them that they don't want commitment. And here is how I want you to truly respond in the scenario. I want you to actually go within yourself and decide who am I going to show up as? Don't worry about how you're going to respond to him. Don't worry about how you're going to text him. As a victor who conquers her own life, does this queen really have time to think about who has rejected her? Or is she consumed in thought patterns, in behaviors, in habits, and in inner self-talk that elevates her life to the next level? You know, as far as I know, even I myself as a high performer. We are so attracted to anything that helps us elevate our lives to the next level. So let's just say you are attracted to a guy who you perceive is a 9 out of 10. Then I guarantee you that that guy, even if he isn't a 9 out of 10, he also wants to be associated with success. Therefore, he'll be attracted to a girl who brings him an increase to his life. So you think about this logically. Once he goes to you, once he rejects you, and once he does all these petty things to annoy you, are you going to be the source of decrease for your own life? Or are you going to work on becoming the increase for your own life first? And either way, once you become the most attractive, elevated, badass queen version of yourself, if he still can't see your inherent worth, whose loss is it really? So therefore, if people are not choosing to value you the way you deserve to be valued, then know that your responsibility is to keep believing in yourself, keep moving forward in your life, and to not let this pettiness affect you from how you are going to follow your joy, from how you are going to raise into your most divine goddess version of you. Now you may be actually even wondering, how do I respond though? When he says, oh, he doesn't want this with me, he doesn't want that with me, how do I actually respond in the 3D reality? The best answer that I have for you is, how do you see yourself today? Do you still feel a bit wobbly and a bit shaky by what you're seeing? If you are still feeling a little scared, I actually want you to take no action. Don't respond. Don't text back. And in fact, you know what? Don't even read the message because your internal stability is your number one priority. If you responding, engaging, or being kind to him makes you feel a little bit fearful and wobbly that he's going to reject you back, don't vibrationally engage in that reality, but pull the energy back into yourself to work on your passion and purpose. Pull the energy back into yourself to meditate. Calm yourself down. Put in the positive affirmations that reinforces to yourself that you are a strong person and your 3D reality cannot shake you. However, if you're already feeling safe within yourself and you are confident to respond to him, then I want you to respond to him as if he is a normal person that you just appreciate and you're sending general kindness to a human being. When you take him off the pedestal, when you stop seeing him as somebody who is above you, then just see him as a general friend where if this nice friend is going to text me this way, how would I respond to this friend of mine? That's how I want you to truly respond. Moving on, the next area of life that we tend to feel rejected by is job offers, getting rejected from a job. Now again, because I see so much progress with my YouTube, despite all the bullshittery that has happened in my life, not just these last four months, but for the last two years, I see everything as energy. Let's just say you genuinely, genuinely want this job and your interviewer says, we don't have this position anymore. We actually even gave the interview that we're supposed to give to you to somebody else. You actually want to come off from this energy like, I am so inherently valuable. Even if I don't have tailored experiences that suit this role, but my character, my ability to adapt to the team culture is so enough for anybody to want to hire me in this particular field. And so if you get rejected, let's just look at it this way. My inherent worth, my inherent skill set, my inherent time and energy is still valuable even if you don't choose me for your position. But if you know inherently that you have what it takes for anybody to want to work with you, every single day you are elevating your skill set, every single day you are doing something to better yourself, whether it's reading the next chapter of a book you like, whether it's learning a new language, then you must realize that even if you say no to me. I will never say no to me. You saying no to me is not going to stop me from upskilling myself. You saying no to me is not going to stop me from finding the exact job that aligns with what I want to do in the future and pays me what I deserve. So no matter who sends you an email rejection, no matter who goes through in the interviewing process, I want you to actually shift your energy again back into yourself. Don't look outwards for the answer. 
Ask yourself if my life was so happy today, if I'm so fulfilled now, getting paid exactly what I deserve, working with the right people who appreciate my skill set, having the right mentors that really support me to shine. What does my day look like today? And I want you to actually go on about that day as if you already have the thing. And back in the day, I used to get really confused myself because I would feel like, but how do I actually pretend to have the job when I don't have the job? I don't really have a task to do. I don't know who I'm dressing up for. So how do you actually pretend that you have the job? when you don't have it. Well, here is my honest answer to you. Let's just say there are limitations to your finance. There are limitations to your day and your life infrastructure. What are some tiny micro habits that you can adopt every single day that signify that you are still successful? For me, I have beautiful clothes to wear. And every time I dress up in beautiful clothes, that signifies to me that I'm showing up as a successful YouTuber. I'm also very fortunate to have access to healthy food. And every single time I cook a meal that I enjoy, every single time I pay attention to what I want to eat, that signifies to myself that if I were to already have this job that pays me exactly what I deserve, I would cook this meal for myself. When I was walking away from every single thing that didn't serve me, I reminded myself every day, if I already earned this income, if I already have this dream career, if I already have my dream life and every single component of my life is working out for me, I would not check my phone. I would not check my email this month. I would not check anything outside of me and I'm just going to work on my mission. And that was my YouTube. And that was how I operated every Every single day, if I already had a dream life, I would not even check who is text messaging me. I would not call back anybody I don't wish to be in contact with right now. I would not trade my free labor anymore just to be seen as a good person. And most importantly, I did not put myself in a position where I had to feel guilt for saying no. We have to realize our worth and know where to invest our time. So ultimately, I just cut tie with that world. It's fine. If I can't be in these people's life without doing anything, then I don't need them in my life. And this is the badass energy that will get you anything that you want, whether it's the right people that will offer you the right jobs, the right contracts, the right salaries that you deserve because you are inherently worthy and you know you are capable of up-leveling your skill set to get paid exactly what you deserve. Okay, the next area of rejection is friendships and social groups. What happens if a social group doesn't accept us? We know what value we can bring to the table, but you're feeling like these social groups are kind of undermining my ability. How do I deal with this situation? So my honest answer for you again is if you are feeling like a five out of 10, stop engaging at all costs with anything outside of you, whether it's WhatsApp groups, emails, text messages, Facebook, Instagram. If all of these things are making you feel wobbly, don't look at it for a second. Temporarily shut yourself out and work on your inner energy. And a lot of manifestation coaches even emphasize the importance of regulating your emotions and make sure that you are internally stable. If there are any outside circumstances that makes you feel wobbly, it's a reflection of the old beliefs that you have towards yourself. So if you once believed that I have to work to be a part of this friend group, no backhanded compliments, no two-faced, no guilt trips, no narcissistic toxicities, no unrealistic demands, I don't think I deserve to have something independent of this because I don't feel worthy of it. In other words, I don't believe I could have actual friendships where I get to feel peaceful. I don't believe I get to be a part of friend groups where every single part of me is accepted exactly for how I am. I don't have to work for it. I don't have to earn it. I don't have to strive to be accepted. If I don't want to show up, I don't get guilt trips for not showing up. If I want to choose me, then that decision is fully supported. That is what a true friendship should feel like. And even if it means you're not going to be a part of a friend group, but at least all the connections that you have in your life enhances your well-being. It makes you feel peaceful. It makes you feel more stable and secure. There is no demand like you have to see me every two weeks in order for us to be good friends. If the bond is there, then the bond is there. And if you don't believe that you deserve to have this kind of connection in your life, then that's where you have to pull back your energy and ask yourself, what do I believe I truly deserve? Do I have to work and earn and strive and be more flashier than I am or always work to be a part of a social group in order to be accepted or in order to make other people happy? Or do I deserve to rest in my feminine energy and allow all the right connections to unfold naturally in my life? Okay, the other area of rejection is also family. Now, this one is tricky because I recently discovered so many things I never once thought in this way until I really took a step back and matured. So I used to always feel rejected 
from my one family member until very recently I started to realize that everybody is really me pushed out. Maybe it was because of a certain belief that I held so long about her that made me constantly feel rejected no matter what she says to me. I mean I'm totally aware of a lot of toxic family dynamics where the actual parents are narcissists or they just genuinely don't love their children. But I do know at least in Asian culture a lot of parents do genuinely want the best for their child and they do love their child but they just don't know how to approach it because people are living in different time and ages. As for my family, I was always seen as the rebel. I was always somebody that seemed troubled. I wasn't a very good child. I wasn't the good girl in the family. So I always felt like the world was working against me because my own family member doesn't see me as a good daughter. Recently, I realized that you can actually shift your whole dynamic with your family by going inwards and working on your internal beliefs that you hold towards them. In my case, because the love is already there and they probably do love me in their own style, you have to focus on evidences of how they do love you. So in my case, if my family member cooks something beautiful, then I see that, oh yeah, she does love me because she's cooking me something beautiful to eat. You really have to take a step back and ask yourself, do I want to have a strange relationship with my own family? family members or do I want to be in good terms with them? If I was already really, really, really rich, I have more than enough money to support them. I have my dream life, so I have more than enough to share with my family members. Am I going to still hold on to this stubbornness? Am I going to still see them as not being worthy of my energy? Am I still going to see myself not being worthy of their love? Again, you can always set energetic boundaries, but with family members, instead of you cutting ties to them completely, if you sense that your family members do genuinely love you, it's actually about focusing on the things that do right. It's about only putting your awareness on all the right things they're doing and actually appreciating them for the right actions. That's when your relationship with them will start to shift as well. But this does take a lot of patience because if our whole life we are living in scarcity mode, if we are always living in fearful survival mode, it is so much easier to nitpick on everything that everyone is doing wrong. And this also applies the same with the guy you're seeing or the guy you're dating. If you're able to change this dynamic with your family member where you can actually acknowledge every single thing they're doing right, for that 1% time they show up right, you chose to acknowledge the 1% and you chose to disregard the 99% where they're not showing up right for you, then that 1% could become 10% the next week and then 20% the next week and then 30% the next following week. And within one year, it may become 100%. You may have a more harmonious and beautiful relationship with your family only because you appreciate appreciate them for what they're doing right. Now this ties back to the guy in that a boyfriend is kind of similar to the dynamic you have with your family. If you feel strong enough within yourself, if you feel really really stable and you're less triggered, the best thing that you can do is to imagine the version of him who is really behaving in the way you want him to. It's actually kind of like raising a child in a way because when I used to be a rebel towards my mom, the one thing I truly want is to be acknowledged for all the things I'm doing right. Let's just say he ghosts me for two weeks again and he's constantly telling me oh we can't do this or we can't do that. If I'm very insecure within myself, I would lash out at him and blame him for not being able to book this vacation for me, to do all these things for me. But because I'm focused on what I enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm able to actually step back and realize that, okay, what has he done right in the past? And how can I stay in this inner state where I believe he's going to give me that again? And once he does one right thing again, I'm going to really acknowledge it. I'm going to make him feel seen. It is safe for you to love me because I feel safe within myself. I don't need your love. I don't need your validation. I validate myself every day and that's why it's safe for you to open up to me. I will not criticize you if you ghost me again. I will not criticize you if you say annoying things to me again because I feel so much love within myself. I'm willing to look past all this pettiness and only see you in the best light. I'm really going to picture that version of you and the minute a glimpse of that version of you pops up, I'm going to keep appreciating it and appreciating it until that version of you is the dominant version of you in my reality. And that's how you can actually flip the rejection of the guy to make him be the most best version of himself in your presence. And I guess you can also apply this with a good friend that you love. You can apply this to any dynamics where you still love the person and you know this person has a light within them, but they're just so bombarded with their own 3D realities. They are bombarded with their own problems, their own shitty bosses, their own pressure and all these things. And you want to be the safe zone for them. And again, this is very different in that you actually have to work on yourself first. 
ridiculous every single day. Like really, really elevate your state of being. Really be happy with who you are to the point where you can see things like this, that even though you may still feel rejected, but you know that this is temporary. This is all a reflection of your past. And as long as you persist in never ever rejecting yourself, as long as you are your own safe zone, there is nobody outside of you that can take your power away because you have so much love and strength within yourself. And I want you to operate your life every single day from this state from now on. So this is how you stop letting people reject you in your reality. Again, if you guys like my video, please feel free to leave a comment down below to see what videos you want to watch next. And again, I would love to grow with you on your journey and thank you for your support. See you soon. Bye-bye.